back, everybody. Welcome back, boys and girls. Uh, we are ready for our fabled battle here. Uh, whenever a character hits level four in the land of D&D time or level three with five experience total, they become eligible for a boss battle. Um, upon completion of that boss battle, they are allowed to proceed to level four and become fabled adventures in the land of D&D time, gaining title, renown, and uh, a pretty sweet bonus of Bartholomew Bucks That's upon a, their... A sizable chunk of change. A si yeah, a lot of cash. Um, so yeah, we have four great adventures. We will introduce them shortly after, but beforehand, Pete and I need to roll upon the great yes. <laughs> wheel of bosses. We have our, uh, we have our wheel of bosses. Uh, a number of very interesting ones on here. Uh, one, I don't know if I, I actually recognize one of these, Jeremy, that I didn't... Uh, I haven't seen on here from you before, uh, so I'm excited to maybe see what that one is. Uh, but just mm -hmm. to run through what we have, of course, as always, we have GM's choice and player's choice, um, two two popular roles. Uh, but then we yeah, have really. <laughs> uh, we then we have the Trapmaster Dop Whistle. We have the Rock of Buckler's Bay. We have Cowl of One Thousand Faces. A lot of ofs in this beginning section. We have Horde Lord Snored. We have Old Blackwing, and we have Tertius Decibus, Rogue. Uh, an interesting crew. Uh, Jeremy, do you want to let it fly? Uh, you will find out long before anyone else. That's true, and I will announce it so that everyone here in the chat uh, can hear it when we do uh, and make their decisions as we spin the Wheel of Bosses. Good luck to you, adventurers. Round and round it goes, upon which enemy it lands, who could know? Oh god, that almost rhymed. But I think it rhymed. Ooh! <sighs> it is the player's choice tonight, Pete. Ooh! You heroes um, will get to choose upon which boss you face. Or allow me to read. Uh, I was gonna say, allow me to read you your options once more so that you can make an informed decision. Um, we have Trapmaster Dop Whistle. We have The Rock of Buckler's Bay. We have Cowl of One Thousand Faces. We have Horde Lord Snored. There's Old Blackwing. And then there's Tertius Decimus, Rogue. Or you could pick the GM's choice and let Pete and I pick one, which would be a weird option. I guess yeah, you could also pick true. the player's choice and then choose again. And pick, so. again, pick again. <laughs> Infinite loop. You've locked us out of D&D time forever. Um, so <laughs> what We are the true design? masters now. Indeed. <laughs> Should we just like roll like a wanted. D7? <laughs> yeah, well, you, if you want, we could just in, roll it again. If you guys if, don't have any. In particular, coal or blackwing interest me. <laughs> Knowing like nothing about them besides their names. Yeah, I saw them on the wheel last time I did a boss story boss battle, and I want to do one of them. Uh, I like to do Cole. Cole. A thousand faces or old yeah. Blackwing, which will it be? Yeah. I vote for Cole. We got two for Cole, unless we want to make it a deadlock. Jenny, uh, uh, sword. I'm in the front. Oh, right. oh, sword. You, you are, not only are you indifferent, you are also a terrifying robot. <laughs> but with that, um, it's two in favor of coal. Uh, and so, I believe it we move like to it is, the coal it, of 1,000 feet. Well, uh, I'm kind of partial to Blackwing. Did Fluffy say? Did I said the say? hard coal. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. Woosh. Woosh wants the coal. <laughs> what, about, what about Switch? Where is Switch? Yes, He's down yeah, on deck. On deck. Oh, oh, Switch, welcome back. Hey, I am. Which back. one do you want to fight? Uh, Cowl or Old Blackwing? Or do you want to spice it up with a random other enemy? <laughs> uh, I would like to let Pete choose. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. Not DM's choice, but Pete's choice specific. Yes. I see. In that case. The dick moves. In that case. Really shut no, me up. He, he relegated his vote to you, Pete. Choose let wisely. us go. Let us go with Cowl of 1,000 Faces, as that is my boss. All right, cool. <laughs> All righty. Uh, in that case, we'll be right back as we set up for this adventure. Or, Pete, are we ready to roll? Um, I'm ready to go, actually. All righty. Well, thank you, <laughs> yeah. Mick, Mick Cool Man, for your follow. We appreciate every follow. Oh, on thank this you. Uh, and without further ado, let's jump right into 
this battle. All right. So, you will be facing Cowl of 1,000 Faces. Throughout the land of D&D time, for a fair stretch now, there's been some strange figures walking around. They've been wearing these pale white masks. Um, and, well, they've been just wreaking havoc throughout the lands of D&D time. They've been attacking people, going about goals that uh, at times seem strange. Um, some of them just doing things like uh, climbing trees and just surveying the, uh, surveying the landscape. And um, whatever they're doing, it's obvious that they're building to something fairly nefarious. Um, so Bartholomew has requisitioned the four of you uh, adventurers who have proven yourself over a number of smaller scale adventures to take part in this, what will be for all of you, your most dangerous challenge yet. Um, he has sourced out all of these kind of strange masked figures to a place in the plane of dreams. Um, uh, as Bartholomew was kind of calling you all into his office, he's meeting with you and having discussion now. Um, um, I believe, um, of course, you've seen some of the goings on of late. Um, I believe that this creature is um, an old being, a being that it takes the faces and uh, abilities of those that it uh, encounters. Um, a terrifying creature uh, by the name of Cowl, referred colloquially in the, in the plane of dreams as Cowl of 1,000 Faces. I need you to travel to his domain and stomp him out. We've pinpointed its location. I've opened a rest point for you at the uh, place. Have any of you been to the plane of dreams before? It can be a bit of a, uh, an unnerving yes. place. Mm, oh. I don't think I have, uh, Fury. I believe I have. I think it was my first adventure with you, Bethany. It would be a first time for me as well. You can only His beds arrive. are lovely. Um, yes, well, you can only arrive there by sleeping in a bed that has been uh, prepared in a particular way uh, that has to resonate with the uh, the plane of, of dreams and of slumber. Um, I have prepared such locations. They should bring you out uh, very near to what I believe to be the cow's domain. Are you all prepared? Uh, may I just quickly say that uh, you have not introduced us. Um, that not is, to mention, uh, how we avoid them stealing our face. Also, <laughs> I would like to correct the strange voice that we always hear. Uh, this is definitely not my most challenging adventure. Uh, not by a long shot. Um, uh, I don't know anything about a strange voice. I cannot comment on the subject. Um, that being said, if you're concerned about your introductions, um, in these moments of drama, I prefer to do them uh, when you are face-to-face -face with your foe. Very uh, well, then. Any way to stop him stealing our faces and powers? Um, mm. Should we wear a mask? I was thinking the same. He looks, um, he looks to you, um, couldn't hurt. Do you want some masks? Yes. Oh, I yes. Do you have any leftover Halloween costumes? Um, <laughs> you're all out of those, unfortunately, but I do have, um, just some masks that were, or some more mundane masks that were left undone. Um, and I could, of course, just change one, so it's a bit more Halloween themed. Should you make one a turtle? Just a turtle mask? You're already a turtle. I'm a tortoise, thank you. I'm on land. <laughs> um, he's a, I'm not going to get into the semantics of it. Uh, the fine Bartholomew. <laughs> very well. I can make you a turtle mask. Uh, and he uh, <laughs> produces a few very plain looking. They're just kind of like the smiling drama masks. Uh, and he tops one on them. Uh, and all of a sudden is now a turtle mask. Um, does anyone else uh, have any requests? Oh, yes. Can you change it to look like this? Uh, and what is it? Uh, I'm sending it to you. It? Okay. Uh, and it, it's a wooden mask. wooden mask. Okay. Um, he says, yeah, yes, of course, I can make that shape. And um, 
Does anyone else want a mask at all, or a particular look? Uh, I'll take one, but I don't need it to uh, glamour it or anything. Fair enough. Uh, and he just hands you the plain kind of wooden drama mask. Just got a big, just got a big smiley face on it. Um, Trigger Mama. Oh, I'll pass, dearie. Yeah, very, very well. Um, yes, and and he makes for you, uh, Jenny, um, this kind of wooden mask with these kind of intricate designs curling up, almost like uh, almost like vines or licks of flame, uh, creating gaps in places. Pretty, uh, pretty cool design there. And he says, um, "Well." Your beds are ready for you when you are ready to sleep in them. Can you tell me a bedtime story? I go to bed. Try to sleep. Yep. You, uh, you lay down in your bed and begin to rest. Um, <clears throat> and Bartholomew starts to speak. Um, this is the story of the mightiest little duckling. Once upon a time, there was a little duckling and he was extremely mighty. He went all throughout the land and slayed countless, uh, and as uh, Bartholomew begins to tell you the story of the mightiest duckling. Uh, Wait, I need is... a glass of water. Um, okay, just a moment. Um, and he kind of walks behind. Uh, you see, he doesn't even like prestigiate it or anything. He like walks out back and fills up a glass of water. And then, All right, anything else you want me to tuck you in? If you don't mind. It's fine. Uh, he reaches up, uh, kind of pushes in at the sides of the sheet. Um, Sugar Mama, you would probably be better at this than I would. Oh, you're doing a wonderful job, Bartholomew. Um, thank Are you. Are you a grandfather? No. <laughs> I, I'm not. Um, but um, I think if I suppose my adventures is... Uh, children of sorts. Um, so, um, is there anything else you need? Uh, what, uh, what else did the Muddy Duck do? Um, and he continues on for some time um, the, uh, about the Mighty Duck and his many friends and their hockey games together. Um, as <laughs> Their hockey games? What? Yeah, the Mighty Ducks. Don't Ducks. worry about it. Uh, I thought they slayed and, many uh, foes. Uh, on the hockey rink, and yeah. uh, <laughs> eventually, you all do fall asleep. Um, and you know, uh, given enough time, I guess Bartholomew would have just sleep spelled you were you not didn't have that <laughs> fey ancestry. I was about to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I didn't have fey ancestry, it would perhaps she should have done that from the beginning. Uh, well, no, he's okay. immune to, uh, she's immune to sleep. Uh, yep. uh, always remember, a good rock to the head can put anyone to sleep. That is true, but you are about to face a harrying foe. Uh, and I would not want to dampen your capabilities in any way. Um, so, uh, good night. And Bartholomew just, the lights turn off in the shop and Bartholomew walks out back. Uh, and it is silent. Um, <laughs> once you eventually all fall asleep, you find yourself instantly uh, awakened. Um, Whoosh, you're there long before uh, everyone else is. I believe you said you fell asleep instantly, uh, and then yep. Sword and, and Sugar Mama, and you guys are kind of waiting there impatiently um, for quite a time for uh, Jenny my to, shell finally, and read a book. Uh, to finally fall asleep uh, here within Bartholomew's shop, but you eventually find yourself standing in a dark wooded forest. Um, I forgot to brush my teeth! <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you, that was you not the time. Out, uh, you call out into kind of the evening air of the forest that you now stand into. Uh, you hear, I forgot to brush my teeth, teeth, teeth. You didn't speak that loudly, but there was still quite a bit of echo. It's a bit strange. Uh, and kind of a, a low mist rolls over the ground. Um, well, now I, we best be going to fight this K old. Oh yeah, we should like totally be doing that. Yeah. If he still faces to gain power, could we still his face and gain his power? Hmm. I don't think that's as... how it works. Forward, progress. I'm gonna walk in a random direction. All right. Um. Well, you begin kind of pondering your surroundings and and looking around. Um. There are very tall trees. 
uh, and you can see kind of hanging from one of them, looking at the spot that where you, where you all came in, you just see kind of it, it looks humanoid in shape, um, and, and they're just kind of hanging from the tree, and they have one of these kind of pale masks on their face, and they're just looking down at you, watching. Is that him? Should we just kill him? Is that it? All right, let's get this started. Yeah, I somewhat doubt it. I'm gonna make the vicious mockery the thing in the tree. Um, all right, uh, they're going to make a wisdom saving throw. It's just a flat d25. All right, yeah. Uh, what do you say? Call that a mask. I've seen better cookies. Man. Um, <laughs> which... From Sugar Mama over here. She has the best cookies. You've seen her cooking, right? <laughs> oh, you which, flat to me, dear. Which, as you say that, um, they actually kind of, you see them for a second, their body kind of like racks and, and writhes, one hand still kind of holding onto the tree. Um, and, and as they're doing that, the hand actually just lets go, and you see them just fall to the ground. Uh, and they kind mm -hmm. of start kind of shaking a little bit, and a hand kind of slowly reaches up and uh, takes the mask off and just throws it to the side. Uh, and they're just there kind of... <sighs> <sighs> and, oh my dear you know, are you, you know, alright um, they don't in particular seem alright uh, and they look up uh, to you and you now see it's um, they're an, uh, an elven male um, who's looking to you all and uh, he says not really now what's I've wrong been, dear can we help I've been out of it for days I've just been watching things from that tree Thank you. It looks to you. Whoosh. There's something. When you made fun of my mask, it was just like, I just felt like I could take it off finally. That was all part of the plan. Persuasion. <laughs> uh, you're a wise and strong adventurer, obviously. Um, yes, so. we are all wise, strong adventurers. Don't mind can the I, children too much. Can I go get the mask they threw away? Um, yeah. Just gonna hold on to that. Um, <laughs> you go over and you go over and grab it, and as you pick it up, um, it actually it seems to be slowly starting to erode away. It's like it still has shape, um, but you see bits of it starting to just kind of grind like this fine white dust. Um, I'm gonna run over to Sugar Mama. She has magic. <laughs> What's happening to it? <laughs> well, it looks like it's crumbling away into dust. Strange. I didn't know that elves could be charmed, just like I didn't know that elves could be put to sleep. You're an elf? It's hard. <laughs> um, but Humans look strange. But Cal's powerful. Where is Cal? At the forest's heart. You At the forest's heart? It. And just kind of turns and points. Forests have hearts now? I'm not I about lead the way. But well. dearie, um, dearie, get yourself somewhere nice, have a bit of a tea, and tuck yourself into bed. I give him a sip of my really big cup of water from the Dreadlock concert. Um, he, uh, he grabs it, just... There you go. Thank you. Hey, don't, don't drink Thank it all. You. I have to drink some. I am a total after get, all. How do I get home? I think we have to kill you. That's how it works, right? No, he has to go to sleep. No, no, you don't go to sleep. It doesn't yeah, okay. seem right. Puts claws down. He sips a bit of his drink. Um, dearie, you've been to the Land of Dreams or whatever before, right? How, how does he leave? I would like to make a history check to remember, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, the way you leave, the way you left uh, before, someone just had to pull you out. Someone uh, had to pull actually, me out. <laughs> yeah, it was like Bartholomew actually just dragged you out when it was time. So, um, someone has to pull you out. You can't. I don't remember doing it myself. I was very, very engaged in what was happening on that mountain at the time. 
Yes. Uh, okay, so but like, just, that's when we just drag you at the time. Let, let, let's go now. Okay, let let's go. We can walk and talk. I'm very impatient, dearie. I, you begin I to... want to have my own title. You're very selfish, dearie. Should I put him to sleep or her? It uh, looks really close. <laughs> uh, she is uh, she is an elf and therefore cannot be put to sleep. Uh, and you continue to um, you continue to walk through the forest, the kind of low mist uh, as you're following this individual's directions. Um, kind of picking up around your feet. Occasionally you'll see in the distance more of these sort of masked figures, um, but they're kind of moving, keeping around you, leading a wide burst, just leading you a pretty wide berth, and just sort of tracking your motion. Um, Should I keep it tagging those ones? Um, do you want to? A little bit. So I'm seeing what the others think. Mm -hmm. There's masked guys in the trees again. Should I attack them? Oh, it's up to you, dearie. We seem to help the other ones before. Whoa, vicious mockery again. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, as you're moving through, um, as you're moving through the forest, you're kind of um, vicious mockering the ones that you can. Some of them, um, as you're doing this more and more, they're starting to give you a wider and wider kind of range. Um, so it's becoming uh, harder to kind of keep up with them. Uh, right. It's all of them, but you're getting as many as you can. Might weaken him. Most of them, hopefully. yeah. Most of them seem to uh, to be broken out of the spell fairly easily when they take this uh, when they take this psychic damage. I ran out of water Which at is... this rate. So <laughs> she just kind of walks through the uh, the woods, making fun of people. Um, <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you were about to say something before sword and got cut off. What was that? Uh, what were you gonna say? I was about to say we seem to be walking around in circles. Well, you do actually find yourself making progress, as I was about to describe to you. Um, you come to an area at the forest where um, things kind of part a little bit. The, the trees are slightly less dense here. A lot of them seem to have been removed. Um, there are two very large ones um, with kind of wide wooden circular, uh, wide wooden circular platforms on them. Um, and you can see on the platform on the left, um, you hear before you actually see them um they just call out to you well welcome to my forest agonizing blast um, oh that's rather rude not even so much of as a hello um you yeah, just shoot an was... agonizing blast out <laughs> Uh, just kind of in the general direction, uh, you hit nothing, uh, as you have not seen the individual yet, and, you know, uh, and they currently cannot be hit. Uh, Hello there! Um, as you continue to move. We're looking okay. for a K-O! It's pronounced cow. Really? I thought it was kale. I was very confused. <laughs> oh, I'm quite sorry. Cow is my name. You found him. Him? Oh, think good. Of me. Context. <laughs> um, you're looking to join, I take it. We're always looking for new recruits. I was going to do that, but your mask crumbled, and I'm very confused. <laughs> oh, I can make one just for you. Special one. At the moment, I'm happy the total one, but I'll get back to you. Uh, now, tell me, who are the four of you? Well... Why do you, why do you want to join? Go on, don't be scared. Speak up. My name is Jenny Smith. And she's a little and rude. I am the it's protector... So of the realms. Oh dear. Sugar Mama tried the cookies. Now. Tried the cookies, now's the time. <laughs> now, now, now. Let us speak. The protector of the realms. That's very interesting. Yes, I do all of the protecting. Um, now tell me, what do you, how do you protect things, Jenny? 
I'd love to know. You seem like you're powerful, yes? I am powerful, yes. I protect things with um, my shield. And I hold up my sparkling enchanted shield. Uh, indeed. Does, does it have a unicorn on it, if I remember correctly? Yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. Good, good. And the rest of you, you're powerful too, I take it. Uh, oh, I don't there. consider myself all that powerful, dearie. I'm just a mom. No, no, no. don't say you're so short. <laughs> you find yourself in my domain. You must have some skill. Who are you? Ooh, I do, I do, I do. I want to stop playing my conch. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, you begin kind of, uh, you begin kind of piping out this, uh, this kind of uh, melody on your conch, um, and, uh, it seems very out of context and, and very contrasting to the environment that you're in, and, uh, you see kind of, uh, you hear kind of a, <laughs> wow, I haven't heard music like that. In a long time, maybe ever. That's interesting. And, and, and you see him just kind of, uh, you see him just kind of like crawling down now um, over the side yeah. of it. And what what you're looking at, um, he, he was on that kind of raised wooden platform that I described previously. Uh, and what you're looking at, it, it seems to be just kind of this, this shifting black mass. Um, you see his body kind of reshaping and forming. Uh, it just looked like a pool at first, but arms seem to uh, move out of it. Uh, and then you see him form kind of legs, uh, almost like uh, a gorilla's body, but with a big giant white mask uh, over the face. How far away is he? Away he? Of, uh, as he climbs down, uh, drops down onto the ground. Uh, when he drops down in front of you from the platform, um, he's now uh, 60 feet away. The also skill. I played the conch. That is skill. My um, my. All right, go ahead and roll for initiative. Oh, oh god. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you're going to cast a hex for that. Sure. Yep. <laughs> I'll, uh... Are people on land always this rash? <laughs> Uh, grand. <laughs> um. Yeah, so that is... Cow. So you, uh, you hold out your hand. What does your hex look like? What is Jenny's hex? Uh... I mean, by definition, I don't think it has a visual. Okay, you don't, like, you don't do any kind of, uh, thing. Oh, she no does. Problem. She, like, touches, like, her flail... I think she has a flail. What? 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 No, she has a cut hammer. That's right. Oh, a giant a magic fuck off cut hammer. So she Absolutely. like takes a tight grip on it and gives the evil eye towards whatever she's looking at. It's totally like a resting bitch face look. Okay. Uh, and and as you do that, um, along with kind of the uh, along with kind of the the words, the verbal components of the spell. Um, Cowell looks to you, and he goes, That's a shame. I thought we could have been good friends. Uh, and uh, Cowell has been hexed, and uh, is also going to uh, start running towards you. You see him... Doof, 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 doof. I would like to hex his uh, dexterity. So he has um, de disadvantage on dexterity abilities. Uh, as he begins running towards you, uh, as he's the first initiative here. Um, surprisingly, the thing that you're thrown off with on his speed is that uh, for a brief moment as he's running at you, he's this kind of like, um, just this kind of like rampaging gorilla, two hands over fist, and all of a sudden his entire body just shifts. You see the black mass transform and, and reform into, uh, for a brief moment as he dashes towards you, 
Um, he looks like a very large bird. You can see that same, uh, you can see the mask that he's wearing kind of reforms and there's just different kind of uh, painted features on it, although it's still kind of in the same general shape, um, forming just this kind of hawk that uh, flies towards you. Uh, and as he does that, he then, um, right as he's about to land down in front of you, reforms once more back into this, uh, back into this more gorilla-like creature as he dashes uh, into the fray directly um, and is going to make um, is going to make an attack against um, actually he's going to he use can his, move uh, 60 feet and attack uh, you can do a lot of things you can multi-attack actually he's going to use his war cry feature uh, I would like all of you to make me uh, a DC 14 wisdom saving throw Uh, oh wow! And um, sugar mama. Sugar mama. <laughs> Was she the one that left? Uh, are you there, sugar mama? Did we lose? She's oh. out of the room. Oh jeez. Yeah. Um, and it would appear that she is not online, so she must have disconnected. That is, and not good. Um. Oh, she wrote it still. Hey, she got it. She was last she in last initiative? Oh, cool. Um, she had it on the stream, I guess. Woohoo. Oh, okay, cool. Um, when you can get back in, just let me know and I'll drag you up. Um, so, uh, actually, all of you failed the saving throw as, as Cowl kind of lands in front of you in this kind of ape form once more. He just uh, lets out this primal roar and all of you all of a sudden realize the reality and the danger of the situation that you're in. Um, this thing is ancient and frightening, and you are all under the effect of the frightened condition um, of Cal. And he's also going to just take one of his huge fists and um, whip around and swing it at, uh, and it's going to swing it at you, whoosh. What would I do? Um, <laughs> it plays um, him a lovely melody, the bastard. Does 19 hit? Yes, 19 kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, you suffer uh, uh, eight points of bludgeoning damage. I expected as, uh, to do this early, but I guess I'll cutting word to it. Can't say it. Um, okay. <sighs> um, when a creature you can see within 60 feet makes an attack roll, the ability check for damage roll, you can use a reaction to expend one of your fighting inspirations, rolling a D inspiration, which I think is a D6 or D8? Um, D6. I don't. It would be a d6 for you right now, yeah. Okay. I reduced all oh, wonderful. I reduced damage by one. Fantastic. Uh, so you only take seven points of bludgeoning damage as he pff, crashes into you. Um, <laughs> you weren't quite ready yet, and a lot of your oh, welcome back. Ah, uh, uh, hello. You are you are currently under the effect of the frightened condition, um, and pff, pff, uh, you watch as Woosh takes a huge. Uh, Played a melody right and hits me, bastard. <laughs> um. Uh, and just lets out this primal roar, and that's going to be all for uh, Cowell's turn. Um, so he does a lot there. That's going to be Sword. Uh, how long does this Whoa! 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 You're, you might have to relog again, Sword. You are once again the mega robot. He was His question how was, how long does this effect last? Um, you get to make another saving throw at the end of your turn. Um, sword, while, while you, uh, wait a second, I think you're good again. Uh, in that case, I shall cast Cure Wounds on, the uh, on, uh, whoosh. Okay, so you're yeah. both, um, um, you're both, uh, kind of right next to each other, right up in front of this big, uh, right in front of this kind of huge creature, um, actually... No, yeah, that's fine. I'll say that you're already next to him. Uh, and you reach over and cure uh, cure his wounds. Uh, go ahead and roll me a d8 plus your wisdom. Uh, wow, for 10 points of healing, uh, refreshing, uh, refreshing him all the way back that up to full. way, way more than I needed to think. Yep. Um, and did you cast that level 2? I did not need that much. Um, yeah, but you are now back up to uh, to over full as you... Um, yep. <laughs> As you are now good to go, Boosh. Uh, as it now, I believe, also passes to um, 
your turn. Oh wait, no, it's um, actually Jenny's turn. Uh, you said I need to do another wisdom save? Uh, yeah, you can make another wisdom save to break out of this fear at the end of your turn. Uh, and you do so. Uh, nice. Uh, you kind of <laughs> steal yourself in this moment of conflict, uh, shaking off this uh, shaking off this fear effect. Um, Alright, so, what's it going to be? Uh, what's it going to be, Jenny? I'm going to use my paladin ability. Oh, yes. To place a second mark on this person. Indeed. Um, and then I'm going to do the thing that I forgot to do. Unless you're going to allow this to fly, I'm going to cast False Life on myself for free because that's what invocation I took. Um, so. What do you. I mean, so you take an action to just cast False Life on yourself? Yeah, unless you, you want to say that, it, like, I would have known to prepare this earlier. Um, if you if you would have remembered to say it, uh, but unfortunately yeah, okay. you did not. Um, but yes, you take a moment and uh, in this moment when you're frightened anyway, it makes sense, I think. Um, and nice, you gain the maximum temporary hit points. You uh, steal yourself for any incoming blows. Um, right now you're still fairly close. You're about 10 feet away from um, Cowell from where he kind of moved up. And that will end my turn, so wisdom save. Um, absolutely. Uh, and you also break out of the fear. Uh, were you moving, or are you going to stay close? Uh, I couldn't move closer, so I guess I was just staying where I was. Okay, cool. Um, that is going to bring us, in that case, to... Uh, it is now... Uh, it is now your turn, Woosh. Okay. <laughs> Like a, I'm gonna like have like a, how dare you? I played you a lovely melody, and how dare you attack me? Vicious mockery. Uh, vicious mockery. I'm gonna make a wisdom saving throw. Um, he does succeed, uh, handily, actually. Plus five. What? The... He's good. He's proficient in wisdom saves. What can I say? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome to boss battle, my dude. Um, <clears throat> okay. Is that all? <laughs> I want to fight against Ration Sugar Mama. <laughs> okay, oh you also God. take as a bonus action. <laughs> as you... <laughs> um, Sugar Mama, you hear the conch uh, below uh, from uh, from Roosh is, uh, Roosh is, uh, instrument and find yourself overcome with inspiration in this moment. Um, as it passes now, or you can make a wisdom save at the end of your turn uh, to get out of your fear. Probably going to fail. Uh, Ooh, actually, surprisingly pass. Um, do I pass? Right, Actually, you, no. Yep. You, nope. You do pass, yeah. uh, which is going to bring us to Sugar Mama. Alrighty. Uh, what can you do when feared? Uh, you just, it attacks uh, a you disadvantage. Can, you can attack uh, a disadvantage. You, disadvantage. you, you cannot move don't away. Closer. You cannot move Saving throw spells don't count, also, so you can do that. Um, could you roll? Why don't you roll me your two portents now? Because I assume you would have already done that. Uh, what were they? Nine and eighteen. Cool. Um, let's see. Well, there's K.O. over there. Uh, Sugar Mama's gonna send him a bit of a candy surprise. Why not? Um, a nine, unfor or, I'm sorry, an eight, unfortunately, misses. Um, as you... <laughs> Uh, throw your candy surprise out at uh, Cowell. And he just kind of, uh, you just see it kind of like hit the side of the body and just kind of pff, uh, bounce off. Uh, he has some pretty, uh, seems he has some pretty thick skin, this kind of writhing black mass that makes up his uh, body. Um, is there oh, anything dear. else on your turn? Um, no. on your turn? Okay. Um, oh, you can make a wisdom save at the end. All right. And all of, all of you failed and then all of you succeeded. None of you are feared at this point. Um, you see um, Cal at the beginning of his turn once again, just kind of <sighs> lets out another one of those kind of bellowing roars, but having already kind of succeeded on it, all of you are able to um, without difficulty just kind of <sighs> brush it off. Uh, and uh, Cal is going to pull back the uh, pull back the fist and <sighs> uh, swing it. Uh, this time, he's going to swing it at you, sword. Uh, there's a 22 hit. Yes. 
Um, you suffer eight points of bludgeoning damage as the heavy kind of uh, as, as the heavy black hand just <laughs> brings uh, crashes down on top of you. You see that the hand is like di disproportionately large for the rest of uh, Cal's body, and um, that is actually all Cal can do at this time. Um, that is going to bring us to uh, sword. Sword. What would you like to do? Uh, no longer frightened at this point. Um, in that case, I should pull weapon. <laughs> cool oh, page. Man, cool all, page. all of these, all of these difficulties. Uh, yeah, front page. Spiritual weapon, absolutely twenty-three hits. Um, you watch as this. <laughs> Um, weapon is summoned right over, kind of above Cal. What what form does your spiritual weapon take? Of a sword, obviously. Of, of naturally, uh, this uh, kind of floating spectral sword appears and uh, stabs into Cole. You see it just kind of like sticking out of the shoulder uh, of uh, of Cowell as he takes four points of force damage. Uh, is there anything else on your turn, Sword? Because I believe that's just a bonus action. Yes. Um, I believe so. Right. In that case, I shall, uh, cast the healing word on, uh, not healing word, uh, actually, sword, um, on some, uh, well, you're the, um, uh, you're... Yeah. oh my lord. Yeah, sword, could you maybe just relog your client? Because it's, He's it's trying really to cast bad. cure wounds, I believe. Um, and yeah, I, Unfortunately, you can't cast more than one spell that um, isn't a cantrip per round. You can only cast one non-cantrip spell per round. Um, All right. Um, but sorry, and... could you just uh, relog Discord uh, and, and rejoin? Um, sure. It's it's yeah. Thank you. Um, I will get the rest of Sword's turn once he returns. Uh, but in the meanwhile. Uh, Jenny, would you like to take your action? Jenny points finger guns at Cowl and winks. Okay. Agonizing blast. All right. Um, all right, 24 absolutely hits. Uh, go ahead and roll that. Uh, is he in melee range? It might be disadvantage. 10 feet away. As um, Pete said. Yep. Okay. So, um, it's 11 plus 2 from my paladin hex, and plus okay. a d6. So go ahead and roll the uh, the d6. 18. 18 points of damage. Alright. Um, as you do that, um, you hit him with this attack, and uh, as it crashes into uh, as it crashes into Cowl, uh, you watch as he just kind of turns towards you, and all of a sudden, just like these strange kind of feral instincts instincts seem to kick in, and he just uh, jumps up next to you. Um, he just makes a massive jump uh, and instantly moves in melee and makes an attack against you. Um, but he does opportunity take... Opportunity attack? Uh, actually, this movement does not provoke opportunity attacks. Okay. Um, and so he makes an attack against you, 18 for 11 points of bludgeoning damage. I'm going to use yeah. my spell slot and my reaction to shield that. Rad. Um, so yeah, you pull out the shield as the fist crashes down. Uh, and as you're doing, uh, and as the shield, the fist breaks into the shield, um, you watch as that mask and kind of from the uh, the damage of the agonizing blast, blast as it's kind of hitting away, the mask just starts to uh, crumble and disintegrate. Uh, and behind that mask, you can just see kind of these two uh, glowing kind of deep green uh, deep green emerald eyes uh, behind it that appear for a brief moment. Um, is Jenny sticks out her turn? tongue. Okay. Um, and at the end of your turn, um, those eyes kind of um, those, uh, those eyes kind of disappear and kind of fade into the black mask and a new face appears. <laughs> Uh, you see the face of that kind of bird uh, appear once more as Cowl's body shifts and, and melts. Uh, two claws and, and two great uh, bird wings uh, grow out as um, that form seems to have been destroyed. Uh, and, Sword, you back? Yes, sir. 
Okay. So uh, I missed I missed your action on your turn. Uh, could you tell me what the action that you're going to take was? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what's available to me? Um, you can cast a cantrip or, cantrip or make an attack. Uh, in that case, I shall, uh, since he's away from me now, uh, I shall use my like, crossbow to attack. Right. Yeah, that definitely hits. Roll damage on that. Okay, 10 point. Nice. Wow. Um, 10 points of piercing damage <laughs> uh, as the crossbow bolt sinks into the side of Cal's. <laughs> um, all right. Um, that's, I think, going to bring us to whoosh, his turn. Um, are there any ma masked people around besides him? Um, all of them are keeping a pretty large distance here. Okay. Uh, but, the, but there are some uh... that are kind of far away. Like, the closest one's about 80 feet away. Oh, I could hit it and then ask for their help. <laughs> mm. No, that'd be two days. Okay, I'm just gonna get out my wand and I'm gonna... All four ch charges right into this guy. <laughs> Oops, not from there. One second. So, four charges to cast at level four. 22 force damage. Um, 22 force damage. Oh my god. <laughs> How dare you insult my conch playing, you little bastard. Um, you watch as the... Um, you watch as the magic missiles uh, course out through the air uh, and just all uh, strike into this creature. That's insane damage, too. Um, uh, as, the, as they all do so, um, you see um, they kind of strike into the mask and that mask also shatters, and the bird form also dissipates. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and you see it take on a new form. Uh, this <laughs> next one, it, it kind of... Um, is there, I'm sorry, is there anything else on your turn? Uh, I would... That, uh, using a spell from an item, does that count as me casting a spell? It's an action. Yeah, but if I, if it's if it doesn't count as casting it's, a spell, it's, yeah, it's, can it's I use action, a bonus action spell? The, yes, you can. Okay, then I would like to heal. Uh, was it sword that got hit, or was it switch? No one got uh, hit. I got hit in the last turn. Yeah, sword. Yeah. Okay, I would like to return the healing to sword and bonus action healing word him. Excellent. Um, For six. All right, um, Sugar Mama, as it passes well, down to nice. your turn. You you see uh, also i need you to roll me a d4 um just go ahead and roll me one more d4 Three. by the way okay yeah three um you watch as another magic missile just kind of whoop, off the end of the wand of harm orphans and just kind of filters off into the forest and then you see one of the masked figures just take a magic missile uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and fall orphans. out of the tree to the ground <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he may be an orphan that's a that's, ooh. <laughs> my right. head's gonna slowly go into my shell like oh god <laughs> in that case yes uh, sugar mom is passing your turn you watch as cowl's just kind of uh, mass of a body that got kind of seemed to discorporate for a moment uh, as the magic missiles destroyed this kind of uh, bird mask uh, and a new mask um, slowly arises and uh, appears out of it. Um, this one, it's just kind of got a, a, a big grinning face, uh, and as this form appears, you watch as smoke uh, starts to emerge, and the natural fog on the ground starts to kind of emerge around the individual. Uh, you are now all in dense fog, uh, obscuring vision uh, of the target uh, to a degree. Is it water vapor? Uh, it is. I mean, it's... Which it's is enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's pleasant. It's pleasant. Um, Sugar Mom, what would you like to do? Um, going to use this to create a puff of wind to help blow away that nasty fog. Oops, did not mean to do that. Um, <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, all right, so you <laughs> um begin kind of. Doof, doof, uh, pushing wind in and about the area. Um, as you're doing so, the fog is moving to a degree, but it seems too thick for you to dissipate it in this manner. Um, like, you, you clear out kind of a small space in front of you, but 
the fog just seems to be constantly generating itself. Oh, what a shame. Um, is, there, is there anything else you would like to do on your turn? No, nothing else I can do. Bonus action, uh, hand me a cookie. Yes, you have a cookie. Um, <laughs> um, cowl uh, in this form, um, you see them start to kind of move in the fog. It's tough to even tell where they are in this form. Um, but now they're just kind of, you hear their words start to speak. Uh, their words start to speak is a great sentence that I'm going to use all the time, forever. Uh, they start to speak. Um, He's moving away from me from melee combat? Um, uh, no, he was uh, no longer... Wait. Yep, you can go ahead and make an attack with disadvantage. Okay. Um, yeah, the nine unfortunately misses as the fog is kind of throwing off. Um, and it also, it seems within the fog, you see just kind of like images start to appear. Oh, Pete, you're really quiet. Um, what about now? Can you hear me effectively? Yeah, that's better. Um, yeah, you, you see images start to appear within the fog. It feels like there's just a whole bunch of this individual now just kind of moving around in this uh, around in this space. It's very disorienting and his voice seems to permeate from everywhere. We will all make delightful additions to my collection very soon. Um, just can you just hear some, some whispers. Um, and that's all that Cal is going to do on his turn. As he does something uh, that's going to bring us to Sword. What would you like to do? Hmm. Uh, I think my best bet would be to, uh, hold on. I think my best bet for the moment would be to cast a uh, time. Does he have disadvantage because of Hex? Um, I'm not sure how Hex works. Uh, actually, yes, right? Not for saves. Ability okay. checks only. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, cool. Um, yeah, you watch as the Sacred Flame seems to uh, radiate on one particular point that you seem to find within the, uh, within the fog, uh, and it actually catches and, and meets something. It's like, over there! Uh, you hear him kind of call out in pain, and the sound seems to come from, uh, like I said before, it seems to come from all around you. Just... What, um... Is there anything else on your turn? Uh, that'll be all for now. Alright. Um, that is going to, in that case, bring us to... Okay. Wait, no, I'm sorry, it's, uh... It's, uh, yeah, no, it's Jenny. That's right. Yeah, it's Jenny. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do something that uh, may upset my father, but we're going to use one of our innate abilities as a half drow. And that point that I saw the sacred flame rain down. Okay. Um, Very powerful. You cast out a fairy fire. Does that succeed? Uh, my save is 13. Okay, just barely succeeds. Um, you oh watch no, as this that's a 9 now. Ooh, ooh. Oh! Nice. I want to use cutting words. Can I do that uh, with No, word? she already used her portent to make yeah, it a 9, so it already oh, okay. fails. It absolutely happens. Um, so... Okay. You watch as the individual um, starts to kind of glow, piercing the fog, kind of counteracting it to a degree. Um, and then you watch as the first one that was kind of in the area starts to glow. Um, you watch slowly after the illusions start to take up the same light. Um, however, you have definitely increased your odds within this fog. Um, uh, is there anything else on your turn? 
Um, I'll move up next to it. Okay. Um, you get closer. That was my action, and I don't have a bonus action. Uh, and he just kind of whispers into you. You think my planes magic will be enough to defeat me? Uh, Sticks out tongue again. Indeed. Um, that's going to bring us to... Whoosh, what do you want to do? Does it appear that he's using magic? Yes. Uh, can I see him at this point, or know the rough area where he is? Because he's glowing? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, can I cast silence? Um, certainly. Okay. Any verbal components? No longer work. In that area. Um, anything else on your turn? Uh, no one, no one needs healing. Uh, Sugar Mama still has the inspiration. Well, it just becomes eerily mute in the region that you're in, just as you're just plunged into nothing here. Mm, I don't have any other bonus action stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's good for now. I'll, I'll move a little bit back. i will closer to Sugar Mama a bit. Cool. Um, yeah, you take a. Uh, yes, yes, please. <laughs> you take a few steps backwards. To Sugar Mama. Mm. It's a little bit tough to find Sugar Mama. You have to look around and kind of call out to each other in the, uh, in the dense forest. It's the only woman I know that makes seaweed cookies. As it passes to Sugar Mama's turn. Well, let's see. Sugar Mama. Can Sugar Mama tell where this uh, big old jumble black glowing thing is? Yep. Between all of the various things there, you can tell. Alrighty. Just gonna descend in a bit of a candy surprise. Um, you have disadvantage from the fog and advantage from the fairy fire, so an 18 does hit as you uh, throw your candy surprise out. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that's almost max damage. Two away from max damage. Um, yeah. Alright, so as you toss out your candy surprise, um, you see it. <laughs> Uh, move through kind of the area, but one of those shifting forms of cowl within that area, uh, it strikes one that doesn't seem to be the real one. Uh, and the attack just kind of disappears, and you hear cowl within do nothing because he is silenced. But yeah, one of the uh, one of the three illusions that had appeared is now disappeared. Alrighty. Um, is there anything else on your turn, Jim? I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Um, in that case, that's going to bring us to the turn. Uh, Kel's turn. Um, Cal is going to take a few steps. Actually, Cal is going to move uh, fully out of the silence, um, moving in, within melee range of. So, attack of opportunity from. Um, yep. So, uh, switch, Jenny. Yep. Um, yeah. Go ahead and roll damage on that. 20. Okay, but uh, remember, I gotta add a lot of stuff. Um, actually, don't worry about it because as you swing your cut hammer through, um, you watch as another one of these illusions, um, the cut hammer uh, passes through it, uh, and Cowl continues to um, okay. move backwards. Uh, as he does and kind of pops out of the silence, um, Cowl is going to look to you, Jenny. Does he move forward or back? Like back out of the silence or forward towards Whoosh and Sugar Mama? Uh, or to the side? Uh, okay, good, to, good. Uh, back to him, forward towards Whoosh and Sugar Mama. Uh, and good, good. whisper to you, Jenny, you will fall in time. I'd like to make a wisdom saving throw. Except I can't hear it. Do they have to it. hear it? If the, yeah, if they have to hear it, it doesn't work. Um, does Vicious Mockery require the target to hear? I forgot that uh, you're also in the silence. Yes, yep. yes, it does. Uh, yep, never mind, you're right. My apologies. Uh, no effect, he says that, but it does <laughs> uh, And um, he's going to walk over and make an attack against you, uh, Sugar Mama, with <laughs> staff. It's 26 hit. Against two? Uh, against you. I mean, I know 26 hits, but just for formality's sake. Uh, and you take four points of bludgeoning damage as this kind of glowing magical staff just... <laughs> Kind of cracks you. It seems to almost be kind of fused with the body, uh, the same kind of color, but at the 
end of it. It uh, turns out that's all for uh, that's all for Hell's turn. Uh, so sword uh, stance. To... Yep, sword. What do you want to do? Now, a quick question. Um, fairy fire is still in effect, correct? Yep. yep. As well as the uh, as well as the fog cloud. And the as well as the what? Uh, the fog around. Around Cal. In that case, go could ahead. I? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I say, in that case, could I use thaumaturgy to increase the light radiance of the fairy fire? Um. Because that is one of its effects. It can bright or dick, uh, bright or dim, uh, brighten or dim yeah. uh, flames. Um, this is not a natural flame. This is more of a magical flame. Um, that was created by the spell fairy fairy fire. Um, I'll let you try it if you want to, but it'll be difficult and require a pretty high roll. Uh, that would be a wisdom check. In that case, I will just fire my crossbow and at Cowl and see if I can't uh, land it. All right, go ahead and make an attack roll. 23 absolutely hits. Uh, roll damage on that. Another 7 points of piercing damage. The crossbow bolt uh, strikes into this... Uh, actually, we'll have to make a quick roll first. Uh, actually, the crossbow bolt um, hits the last illusion. Uh, and you're the, out of the illusionaries. Uh, and all of the illusions have now been defeated, um, but Cal still seems to be in good shape in this form. Uh, and as you... Uh, this, nothing happens, actually. Um... Yep, that's all. Um, that's going to be it for your turn, I think, Thorn? Yes. Uh, in that case, Jenny. it's going to be... Whoosh. Oh, no, Jenny. No, Jenny. Yes. Jenny. It's about that order. Yep, I know. Uh, Jenny. You want Jenny that? walks up to the figure. Mm -hmm. And uh, swing. Um, the 13 uh, actually just hits. All right. 10 plus 2, 12. Um, Sugar Mama and I within 5 feet of it. Do, 16. Do we, that, do we take that fire damage? There is no fire. Fairy fire is glowing light. One creature within 5 feet of the target takes 3 fire damage. Uh, I'm not using this spell. Okay. <laughs> um, Alright, so 14 points of damage. Uh, as the cut hammer... Uh, the plus clock. 2. Oh. 16? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, even more so, as the cut hammer uh, swings across, uh, uh, it cuts through this mask, and you watch as another one disintegrates, revealing the, uh, the emerald eyes of the creature once more. Um, anything else on your turn, Jenny? Stick up my tongue again. Alright, that tongue, uh, that tongue game is on point, as we pass now to... Uh, now it is Whoosh's turn, uh, and as it becomes your turn, you watch as uh, Cowl turns into, <laughs> this time, a seemingly humanoid form, except the various, uh, the fog cloud <laughs> dissipates, um, except for the various kind of extremely long hair that uh, reaches up and kind of wraps and moves around uh, Cowl. I... I'm just gonna claw him twice. Um, seven misses. <laughs> seven misses, unfortunately, yes. Uh, and eleven misses. Well, okay. the fog disappeared, right? Um, oh, yep, you're right. Fairy oh, fire. fairy fire advantage. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Yay! <laughs> ten damage. <laughs> um, ten points of damage. <laughs> uh, your claws uh, rake into Cal. Uh, that's it. That's my action and my bonus action. Cal's getting beaten down. Um, in that case, that's going to bring us now to Sugar Mama. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, let's see. <laughs> I think the bit that I know that I can't do surprise. Yeah. 13 unfortunately misses. What about an 18? Uh, an 18 definitely hits. You're gonna be of inspiration, so you can roll a d6 too if you like. Oh. Alright, I'll do that instead. Yay! 
15. Uh, 15. Uh, a 15 just. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. A 15 just misses. Alright. Got it. <laughs> Um, so 13 more points of damage. Okay. Um, all right, this time the, uh, this time the blast, uh, courses out towards Cowell, um, in a pretty, uh, in a, in a pretty big blast. What damage type are you going with? Uh, sugar mellow. Oh, uh, acid. It's very okay, yeah. nasty. Um, this kind of sticky green acid appears and uh, blasts into Cavill's face. You watch as it does so. This mask also um, dissolves, uh, and that's going to bring us to Cowell's turn. Um, Cowell, at this point, is just kind of looking around. You see the body is just kind of writhing and just kind of twisting, trying to find some sort of shape, uh, and he seems to be having a hard time doing so. Um, and in this kind of mass of vines, uh, I would like... Um, I would like you, Jenny, actually, I'm gonna go for Jenny, um, to make me a, to make me a dexterity saving throw. Um, you watch as Cowl, um, just, uh, dashes away from the two of you, provoking, uh, opportunity attacks if you would like. Uh, from, uh, Woosh and Shukamama. Yep. Um, okay. not from you, Switch. Uh, I or actually, you right were already in. Yeah, you were already in, in melee range. That's actually that's yep. actually my mistake. There was no opportunity attacks. You were already in melee range. Um, right. So never mind. You watch as Cowell just uh, reefs up, and 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 all of the maybe the waste of the crit, Pete. Of dark, uh, yeah, I, you fell for my trap. All, all of the tendrils <laughs> of darkness kind of uh, whip up and start kind of wrapping around your body, Jenny, as you're trying to move and get away. Uh, and you watch as Cowell just kind of. Uh, engulfs Jenny for a moment. Jenny. Oh dear. Um, uh, you're going to suffer. What is it? Oop. Lost, Lost sugar, mama. She's on deck. She just needs to be dragged up again. Yay. You're going to suffer twenty-two points of acid damage. But he crit missed. Yeah, it wasn't for the attack roll. I just wanted the damage. Um, uh, as uh, Cavill surrounds you, uh, and you feel from the inside, your body starts to get um, sort of. Do I see this attack? Right yeah, it happens right next to you. Uh, but it's not an attack roll. It was a saving throw that uh, Switch failed. Um, the chromatic orb is just up there because it's the same damage roll. So uh, damage unless you can boost the save somehow or prevent change. I can, I can reduce the damage, but he's already reduced it to fourteen, so I'm good. I guess I don't know how he's reduced it to fourteen. Um, Temporary hit okay. points. Oh yeah, okay. Oh nice. Um, so are you still uh, are you still good, Jenny? I have thirteen. Excellent. Uh, in that case, that's going to be all for Cowell's turn. Is Cowell seem to be trying to in some way uh, absorb? In some way absorb Jenny. Uh, that's going to bring us to Sword. Would you like to do? Hold on, uh, I have to make my first con save to see if my concentration oh, holds. Yes. That was why they picked you. Too. Uh, yep, you're good. Yep. Um, to Sword, this thing is now just kind of surrounding Jenny. It seems like um, it's going to be like a little bit tough to hit. Uh, but what would you like to do? Well, the question would be: Would any of my spells hurt her? <laughs> I could always use healing. Yeah, I was gonna give you my turn. Um, what uh, what's it gonna be, Sword? What do you think? Uh, best to play it safe and okay. use cure wounds. Um, unfortunately, Jenny is right now just kind of since it's a touch spell. Um, 
Jenny is just kind of inside of this writhing black mass. Uh, you can try and reach through and get to Jenny if you want. Uh, uh, which I, will cool. I will tell Sword's character that I've got the healing, that you just uh, try and destroy him. Alright, in that case, um, I will try Inflict Wounds on Cowl. Okay, um, go ahead and make me an attack. 22 absolutely hits. Roll 24, advantage, very far. Oh yes, that's true. <laughs> Doof, doof. Uh, 22 points of necrotic damage. Um, Jenny, you take 11 points of necrotic damage. Um, oh. as, uh, as Sword uh, reaches out and touches onto, uh, and reaches onto Cal. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, but you are, uh, you are restrained. Um, um, and, and, and touches Cal. Well, you see as part of like the body, it seems to drain of color. Um, from this kind of lustrous, shiny black to more of this kind of dulled gray, almost, as you uh, pull more of the life source out of Cal. Um, his motions are becoming more and more desperate and erratic. Um, that's going to bring us to... Um, uh, Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> so I'm restrained? Uh, you are restrained, yes. You can try and escape the... Uh, can try and escape the restraint, or you can do like an attack from the inside. Or... So my advantage cancels out from my disadvantage from being restrained, correct? Um, yeah. I would actually say you still have advantage because I'll, if you're making an attack from the inside, then it's hard to miss. Like, I would have given you advantage because it's almost impossible to miss from the attack anyway, so. Then let's so do can... that. Let's go out in a blaze of fucking glory. Um, but unfortunately, oh, wow. an 11 still misses. Um, <laughs> as the cut hammer, um, the cut hammer rolls around, uh, but is unable to find any purchase. It's too close, uh, tongue tightly, clung tightly to your, uh, to your body for uh, the attack to find purchase. Is that all for you, Jenny? Uh... Oh, man. Yeah, that's it. Um, all right. Uh, in that case, that is going to bring us to... Uh, flip. Whoosh, what you gonna do? Uh, so I can still see, like, a part of uh, Jenny, right? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna healing word at level two. Uh, so 10 points of healing for you, Jenny. Uh, then I shall, uh, rape here. I'm not gonna get a crit again. That was a waste. Oh, look. Oh, no, disadvantage. That's right, because of the fairy fire. 21? Uh, 21 does hit. Full damage on that. <laughs> one that my dex is meant to be added to that. Uh, oh, that's right, I have zero dex. <laughs> uh, you take half of one, which is, in this case, rounded down to zero. Uh, <laughs> um... That's the way to okay. go, boys. One damage. Slowly wear him down. <laughs> you, hear Cal, you hear Carl cry out in agony uh, as he suffers this one point of piercing damage and also uh, some healing, which is important. Um, yes, everyone punch him to death. Deal one damage at a time. <laughs> That's the optimal strat here, I think. Uh, what <laughs> I found the strat, everybody. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I <laughs> fight well, theory. Keep it up. Oh, is that, is that all? Yep, oh. bonus action in action. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, um, Sugar Mama. Oh, oh, oh all right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try and get that thing to spit out that, that, uh, uh, I, I suppose she's rather arrogant, that arrogant girl, yes. So, how's that? Um, absolutely gonna hit. Real damage on that. Alrighty. And that will be forest damage. Or rather, I can't do that, so um, perhaps thunder. All right, um, thunder damage. There's just a loud explosion of sound as you just shoot this like pocket of condensed air at Cowl, which uh, erupts. Just Cowl just uh, taking uh, more and more hits. Um, Jenny, you take uh, six points of thunder damage. Uh, you still are you still up? Yeah, thanks to the second level healing word. Um, 
In that case, at the start of your turn, I'd like you to make me a strength saving throw. Oh. I'm a paladin, so I'm really good at strength saving yeah. throws. <laughs> uh, we found the weakness uh, in the... Uh, in that particular uh, aspect of your paladin game. Um, all right, so as this, um, is this creature. You're a dex paladin? Okay. Wrap more and more around you. Um, yes, you I am a dex paladin with hex. Your arms are starting to move and it, it's starting to sm form almost kind of like a smooth armor around you. Uh, and you see uh, the beginnings of a mask starting to form in front of. Uh, uh, in front of the face. Um, I'd like you to uh, go ahead and make me an attack roll, Jenny, uh, against... Uh, it's going to be against... Uh, sword. Now, does it get all of my abilities? Uh, absolutely. Uh, but okay. I don't know if it can use those things, uh, because you already have, like, all of your big damage moves are on uh, Cal right now, right? Yeah, you can't transfer hex unless the creature dies. So, yes. uh, um, so it does not have it does not have full control right now. So it's just but, uh, an attack. But it uses my ability modifier to attack. Yep. Um, thirteen against you, sword. Uh, sword. I see, I'm pretty sure that the thirteen misses. Hey, I'm um, armor class 19. Um, additionally, at the end of that turn, you take 22 points. Um, I drop. You take, yeah, you take 22 points of, uh, of damage as this thing is continuing to crush and control you. Um, you don't yeah. actually drop. You're still inside. Um, you guys aren't actually aware that Jenny has even fallen. As um, Jenny is now just kind of being used like a like a uh, like a mech suit uh, for this creature. Or a, a so. My hex drops, my curse drops, and fairy fire drops as well. Most importantly, I think. Um, all right, that's going to be all for. Uh, it's going to be all for Cal's turn. Sword. Sword. What would you like to do? Well, uh, considering that we noticed the uh, difference in the our abilities. Um, I think I'll just go on a all-out uh, assault to just finally get rid of it. All right, go for it. Ah, rough. Um, as you go up to, uh, as you go up to, uh, use your most kind of powerful attack against the creature. Uh, it ducks and pulls to the side. Also, you still have a spiritual weapon, which I think you've forgotten about. Would you like to make an attack with that? Uh, yes, can. Yeah, unfortunately, the eight also misses. <laughs> um, actually, what is your armor class, Jenny? Eighteen. Okay. Uh, yeah, the eight also misses. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sorry, what was your unarmored AC? Oh, my unarmored AC? Yeah. Nine. <laughs> okay. uh, it is ten plus dex, so twelve. Okay, yeah. So eight, unfortunately, misses. <laughs> um that anything else on your turn sword uh, you want to move at all um, uh yeah I will, uh, walk back okay that will provoke an opportunity attack just so you know are you cool with that i'm sorry uh, are you cool with provoking an opportunity attack uh yeah okay um can you make me an attack switch with the cut hammer uh, 18 hits. Uh, he has 19 AC. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, the cut hammer just <laughs> barely dings off of your armor as you're uh, taking a few steps backwards. That's going to bring us to Jenny. I'd like you to make a death save. You're still kicking. Um, that's going to bring us to... Uh, that's going to bring us to... Whoosh. Whoosh. What would you like to do? So he seems to be taking on the abilities of Jenny, right? Starting to, yeah. Hmm. Has he taken 
damage since he's taken Jenny's powers? Don't think so. Hmm. Uh, yes, he has. Yep. Yeah, um, wait. No, he got missed twice. Not, not the most recent change. Um. Uh, then he will just continue to crawl. Uh, yeah, well, yep, okay. Man, these claw rolls are insane. Um, roll damage. Nine yeah, the damage. Creatures, um, kind of nearing defeat, and as you, doof, doof, um, as you actually claw at Jenny, the mask that was starting to form over Jenny's face, um, just <laughs> shatters, and um, Cowl just kind of drops Jenny's body <laughs> down to the ground, uh, and is once again kind of exposed uh, in this intermediary form. That's going mm. to be all for your turn, I take it. Yep, damn right. Salt my cotch, I assault your face to death. Uh, in that case, that's going to be... Sugar Mama, what would you like to do? Well... This thing has been quite rude to the, to the girls and boys, so... Let's see what can be sort of surprise can be mustered this time. Um, ten unfortunately misses. As your uh, another candy surprise blasts outward, uh, just kind of going over kind of one of the sort of holes in the mass as it um, uh, as it's continuing to just kind of move and rise on the ground. Um, Sorry, dearies. Uh, it's going to go up to you at this point. Is it actually on the ground prone? Um, is it on the ground? Uh, well, it's kind of like yeah, it's 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 resting on the ground. It's still pretty big, but. Like prone on the ground, or just like stand squatting, writhing it's, perhaps. It's it's writhing as in like it's just this kind of like mass right now. This mass okay. of like black tentacles and. Uh, no, I was hoping it's prone to really. give sugar mama advantage. <laughs> uh, no, this this creature is immune to the prone condition in this form. Um, that is going to bring us to that creature, which is going to look towards you, Woosh. I'd like you to make me a dex save. Uh, okay. That is not going to cut it, as now uh, the creature wraps around you. Grand. Oh. Um, you take sixteen points of uh, you take sixteen points of acid damage. And All as right, it's time to use my last cutting words. Trying to take, trying to take you in as well. Um, okay. Yay! Ten damage. All right, you take only ten points of damage, uh, and that's all for Kyle's turn. Uh, you watch as it's now trying to absorb Woosh in the same way it had Jenny, but it looks a lot less substantial than it did last time. Uh, it's very close. Um, Jenny, uh, did you... Yeah, you... Uh, yes, it passes to a sword, sword. Turn, actually, now. Sword, what would you like to do? What's your health? Uh, I look... I look just about... I look okay, but I do look damaged. Or you could get up the damage dealer. Uh, what do you What do you do, sir? I still cast healing wood on uh, whoosh, oh. and then. Uh, I and then I shall attack with my uh, spear to see if I could not finish off the... Uh... Alright, go ahead and make an attack roll. Um, uh, what is your uh, un-turtle armor AC? 17. Uh, no, without the natural armor. Just your dex mod. Oh, 10. 10? Alright, that hits. Um, go ahead and roll me damage on that. Five points of piercing damage. <laughs> so close. Uh, you stab into it. You take an additional two points, whoosh, uh, negating. You heal as you <laughs> also damage on the inside. Um, Jenny, uh, go ahead and make me a death save. Or actually, you still have your spiritual weapon. Do you want to make an attack with your spiritual weapon? Uh, yes, two I successes. keep forgetting about it. Yep, no problem. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Hits. Yeah. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
My dex is shit. <laughs> Five points of damage. Nice. Um, would you care to describe your killing blow? It's it's right. It's all wrapped around Woosh. Um, Another two points of damage you, to me, uh... I assume. Hmm? The Another spiritual two. weapon gracefully in di uh, uh cowl from uh, my f uh, friend Woosh. Okay. Uh, yeah, the spiritual weapon you watch as it kind of pulls down and just uh, drags across the um, drags across the back of the shell, uh, and the uh, the creature just starts kind of pulling. Um, you can still you can hear it almost trying to like form words uh, as the spiritual weapon kind of drags it off of Woosh, um, and it, it's speaking. You can now now, uh, and it's not quite uh, it's not quite able to do so, and the spiritual weapon kind of flips around and. <laughs> Uh, stabs down a bright light, uh, contrasted against the darkness of Cal's body, uh, as it whoosh, uh, begins to uh, evaporate, uh, as you've seen many of his masks do as well. Uh, and you just hear... Um, as he's unable to even articulate articulate his despair as he is uh, slain by your spiritual mm -hmm. weapon. Um, well done, dearie. Well done. Would you like uh, it, me? Are we out of initiative? You are out of initiative. Um, you watch as a lot of those masked creatures in the surrounding woods, the mask seems to just start to disappear. I blow my conch in his unconscious body. Um, oh, a dead body, right. I guess. As it's, dis as it's disintegrating, there's a brief moment where uh, Woosh stands victorious over the body and uh, ah. sounds the conch. <laughs> uh, Woosh, you look over into the distance and it would appear. Um, you see a lot of people are like, going over and kind of like poking at that one person you hit with a magic missile before. Uh, oh, they're not getting up. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Bartholomew! And, and you just actually all at this point hear a voice in your head. Um, I have interest. Um, I noticed a lot of people in this world you just lost their masks. Should I take this to mean that you were successful? I may have killed someone. <laughs> Good, you killed the cow. Wonderful. And yes, um, uh, yes, cow. Don't worry about the dairy. Uh, within, but <laughs> you find yourselves standing once more in Bartholomew's uh, shop. You can see there's a number of uh, other adventurers gathered there. Gathered there, just kind of waiting for your return. And as you arrive, uh, there's a sudden, just kind of uproar of applause um, Jenny unconscious on the floor uh, yeah <laughs> Jenny's, just, Jenny's just down um, oh and we are we sure I like her asleep you just kind of reaches behind uh, reaches behind <laughs> the desk She's and quiet uh, right gently now. pours a healing potion betwixt your lips uh, free of charge wow <laughs> oh yes they're not difficult to make I mean, just the principle of the thing um, Good morning, dearie. So, adventurers, you've done uh, incredibly well here. Uh, and hey. you know, he has, as always, just kind of the, uh, uh, just kind of the, the little kind of illusory screen of the area that you have helped and all of the people that are now kind of waking up and uh, the cheering throughout, uh, the cheering throughout Central City and surrounding regions. Um, and so, with that, um, you've all become fabled tier adventurers. You've uh, accomplished an incredible feat here. You've defeated a powerful, powerful foe. Um, and so, uh, if you were to all gather now... Is it time to do introductions yet? Um, what? Uh, introductions? You're going, going to do an award ceremony now. A little oh. like that, my friend. Yes, dearie. Just just have a cookie and settle down. So he lines, he lines all of you kind of up along the uh, the side of the room as everyone kind of gathers and, uh, and falls silent. Um, he looks to each of you. So, as you are all aware, um, when you become uh, adventurers, you've defeated a foe such as you have. You've earned the right to gain fabled tier adventures, granted you many more privileges uh, throughout the world of UNT time, a higher salary, and, well, some more dangerous adventures in the future. Um, and along with that comes uh, a, a 
bonus now, as well as a title that you may choose for yourselves. And so without further ado, uh, he walks up first to you, uh, Jenny. Jenny, you are far from the most orthodox paladin that I have seen uh, in my years here in Bartholomew's shop. However, you have proven yourself a stalwart, stalwart and true to your conviction as any paladin I have met. Jenny, have you chosen your title? I am Jenny, the protector, like Galanodo. Uh, ex excellent. And Bartholomew hands you uh, your sack of Bartholomew bucks, and he says, "And so you shall be named Protector." Ah, uh, excuse me, Jenny. Just to let everyone know, do you want it to have the like in it? <laughs> um, <laughs> like no, obviously, duh. Oh. Yeah, yes, Roderick. Like obviously. <laughs> moves down the line now to you. Uh, whoosh. I, whoosh. It has been uh, an honor seeing you perform throughout the lands of D&D time here. With each, uh, with each new place that you travel to, you bring uh, your music and levity as well as your unique perspective on the world. Have you decided on your title? Whoosh. Yes, I wish to be whoosh. I like that. I'll have to get a spelling um, from Roderick who take down your spelling. Um, <laughs> so you will be known throughout the land now as whoosh, whoosh, ah. and congratulations on your promotion to Fable Duty. Hands you uh, your sack of Bartholomew coins. Woo! How much is it again? Double the fabled tier pay rate, which is 200, so 400 Bartholomew bucks Ooh. will all be. A thousand Ooh. Bartholomew bucks I have now, wonderful. Moves on now to you, Sugar Mama. Almost as rich as, almost as, rich as fucking. Sugar Mama. Your devotion to the good people of the world and your participation of DD time and in my adventuring troop has proven to rival, albeit not exceed. That of your devotion to your family. It's been an honor working with you. Have you selected your title? Sugar Mama. I don't want anything too fancy. How about Sugar Mama the Sweet? Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> it is an extremely fitting title. Sugar Mama the Sweet, it is. And he hands you your sack of Bartholomew coins, uh, or Bartholomew bucks, and moves on. Last, and of course, never least, we have Sword. Sword, in your travels around the lands of D&D time, you have shown to be righteous in both your conviction and amiable. You always seek to heal out your allies, to Aid those before you take care of yourself, and for that you have my deepest respect. Sword, have you decided upon your adventuring title? Eh, I'm not on. Eh, I'm not big on titles. Eh, if you do not wish to have a title, uh, you do not need to have one. Um, and Bartholomew hands you a sack of Bartholomew coins. Uh, or jingling Bartholomew bucks, the special Fable tier box ceremony ones. Uh, and he says to you, Sword Co here shall remain as such. And with that, um, the ceremony for promotion to Fable tier is complete. Uh, I wish to congratulate you all fully and look forward to seeing you continue to adventure uh, among my shop. Thank you all for your service, heroes. And I start chanting. <laughs> It's a little hard to chat, dearie. Um, you see a lot of people in the in the surrounding crowd try their best to take it up, but they're all just it's just kind of like uh, a mass of like weird heavy breathing behind you. Uh, uh, but you know what it means. A crowd of people breathing heavily. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's the best. <laughs> all right, level four. Okay. Uh, and you've all reached level four, um, and. 
you find yourselves at Bartholomew's shop. Uh, if there's anything that you wish to purchase. Woo! I'm not 